Well, look where we are. So what I'd like to do right now is welcome everyone to my own personal slice of toy heaven. And with that, let's begin. And one thing I do want to add here as we get started is that the shelves are jammed relatively tightly so the figures are packed very closely together so just bear with me and I will try to get a look at each individual figure as best as I can and where I can't I'll just pull some figures off of the shelf so that you can see the figures in the rows at the back. The first thing we should probably do is have a look at the entirety of the collection display area space itself but Starting over here on this wall is the Transformers, or what at least is a predominantly Transformers display. You can see some Masters of the Universe stuff there in the right shelf, second from the bottom. But for the most part, what I wanted to show here is the paradigm shift between the Generation 1 Transformers and the Masterpiece more modernized Transformers, though as you get lower on the shelves at the left here, you will see some of the Studio 86 War for Cybertron as well as the Legacy Series Transformers. And then at the top of the bookshelves, you'll see some mask stuff there. You'll see the box and gate tour kind of wedged in and some of the other uh, later series vehicles over on the right there. And this wall of boxed stuff here is not always there. In fact, I pulled it out and threw it up on display just because I had an opportunity to do this, but otherwise it's no, it's not blocking the door to the back there most of the time. And a lot of the boxes usually just reside up there. And I know that there are some boxes there right now, but if you get up closer and look, it's a bit sparse up there. Normally it's packed much more tightly and a lot of the boxes are angled sideways, but these boxes down here are either up on that high shelf that I showed you above the bookcases or they're actually in my garage um, or storage areas of the house where they're kind of on display but mostly not on display and of course here you see the uh, wrestling and some miscellaneous um, collectibles toys slash wall and you can see some of my independent toy line offerings right over here well delta 17's here plus some of the uh, animal warriors for the kingdom and Mythic Legions type of items. There you got some more wrestlers, turtles, more wrestlers, some Star Wars stuff, and some miscellaneous stuff at the bottom. Then you've got some G.I. Joe stuff here. You've got the row of tribute action soldiers that were from 1994, which was for the 30th anniversary. They're kind of set up around the Mobile Command Center, and I've got a bunch of figures in the top row there. And then here we've got some other items here, like some custom figures at the bottom there next to a boxed Defensor and going up the bookcases you'll see the G.I. Joe display and this ring light is kind of in the way. I'll just face it to the back here. It helps for lighting but it can cause a lot of glare and as you can see here uh, with the G.I. Joe display you get up towards the G.I. Joe classified stuff and if you look at the very back you'll see some Studio Series Transformers items as well. Now for the most part with this device that I'm recording on and I'm just trying to get one of the uh, one of the bookcases open here um, the brightness should be okay but what I did do for some of my or for all of my shelves is I've got some puck lighting here but I didn't want to go through the trouble of turning on the lights for um, for the display Ooh, that one needs and that's another thing is that the batteries need to get changed on these pretty often so I try not to leave them on very long but the lighting on this device is um, on the device that I'm recording on is pretty good so you don't need the lights on all the time so what we'll do is we'll just leave them off and you can see that this actually has like a bit of a disco effect where you can change the uh, the color settings but yeah that's just to give a big overview of the collection display area here before we start looking at the uh, individual shelves and uh, take a deeper look. I've got the G.I. Joe bookcase open or at least what I've called the predominantly G.I. Joe bookcase. Well as it stands there's a G.I. Joe on every shelf 
or a bunch of G.I. Joes on every shelf, so I guess it stands to reason that I could just call this bookcase as such. We'll go straight to the bottom, and as I mentioned earlier, these are the Tribute 1994 Anniversary Editions of the Action Soldier, and there's a few Action Marines on the end there, and those are the tributes to the uh, 1964 editions of G.I. Joe during his original 12-inch run. Now, this here is the Mobile Command Center. As you can see, I just loaded up the top shelf, and there's a mixture here of official figures as well as stuff that was done by either Red Laser or Black Major, and even some customs here, like this is a custom um, toll booth into a Transformer spark plug character. Um, you've got some Red Lasers Army figures here. You've got the Red Lasers Army, oops, I've knocked him over, Bombardier that I featured in an old video back in 2022. And why won't he stand up? Okay, there we go. And he, that he's next to the Joe Colton figure that um, I did a collaboration with Toy Domination when we featured that. And you can see some of the sub-team characters here, like some of the Tiger Force characters. You can see a Black Major Starduster in the back there. You can see a Zed Force, um, Action Force custom there from... Um, Red Lasers Army as well. And just going over here, you see another um, combination of these fan made, or some fan made figures there, um, like the Argent 7 style characters like Manle and Shimmick. And here you see um, the different editions of General Flag. You've got a Gloob A team, Mr. T hanging out over there next to a Black Major Snake Eyes and the Night Force colors. And you see some other of the characters from the 1990s and the 25th anniversary Matt Tracker over there in the back and you can see a few characters in acrylic cases as well like some of my Night Force figures I wasn't able to put on display so I'll take those dudes out and I'll show them a little bit more closely along with some of the other more expensive uh, G.I. Joe figures. What I've done here so far is I've taken out my collection of rarer G.I. Joe figures here and these figures are normally tucked away on various shelves in the collection but I thought I would stage them like this just for the purpose of the tour and here you can see the collection of 12 Night Force figures that were released between 1988 and 1989 and they do come in varying degrees of condition albeit everybody's complete but the paint wear varies from one figure to the next like for the most part the paint is good like if you look down here though Tunnel Rats lost a little bit of paint on his face but he is complete, even having his elusive flashlights. And here you see the rest of the figures there. So Night Force, as many of you know, closed out 1988 and 1989. Or that should say they closed out the 1980s for G.I. Joe um, by being released in those years. Uh, you got a few figures here from the Palatoy Action Force. You can see Quarrel, who is the repaint of Scarlet now, because she doesn't have foot pegs for a stand. She kind of leans over. Um, I can stand her up, but then she just falls back over. And, Here's Jammer, who's the repaint of Stalker that came with the uh, Zed Force uh, HQ way back in the day. And here's um, the Red Laser figure, um, who's the repaint of Cobra Commander, which incidentally enough, I bought this figure back in 2019. And then if you go over here, I found the Red Laser Exterminator, which is the vehicle um, that he came with. I found that at the Victoria Ultimate Hobby and Toy Fair in 2022. So I thought about displaying him inside of the box, but I thought he looks pretty good inside of his uh, acrylic case over here as well. So right now I've got them separated. And then as you pan over to the right here, you see some of the characters from the Brazil um, manufactured Estrella company. You got some of the figures there, like here you've got Felino over here. You've got Urzor with his pet over here, but of course the, <laughs> The animal companions don't uh, don't sit well in the acrylic cases, so it's got to go, uh, it's got to stand sideways. And uh, here is uh, Alpinista, which is the uh, the Brazil Estrella version of Hit and Run. And here's a Brazil Estrella exclusive known as the Cobra Diaco figure. And um, getting back to some of the UK stuff, here's the UK Tiger Four stuff, which would be Outback. You got um, over here. You've got Hit and Run as well as Psych Out. And you got some other harder to find stuff, like here you've got Hard Top. Uh, you'll see that Payload is um, up in the bookcase way above. I had to put him in a slightly different acrylic case size. I mean, he might fit in the case like this, but I had a larger one that he seemed to fit better in. And there you've got the uh, Mail Away um, exclusive Ninja Viper with his two swords there. And you've got the uh, Mail Away exclusive Star Duster 
um, as well as the uh, somewhat goofy looking but quite desirable listen and fun tripwire. And then a figure that was um, released as part of a Jocon exclusive a number of years back, which was based on the uh, G.I. Joe fan named uh, Gary Goggles Head. And this was a sightline figure that was released by Red Laser's army. And incidentally, since then, Skeletron, um, as part of the RoboSkull project, have done some tribute figures to Gary as well. Over here is a uh, sealed um, version 3 on the bubble version of uh, Sergeant Slaughter that my friend uh, Peter gifted um, from to me all the way from Ontario. So yeah, there's the um, somewhat rarer and I don't know if I should say Holy Grail, but some of the more hard to find G.I. Joes in my collection. Going up another shelf, you see the collection of all at least one of my Cobra shelves just going left to right here. Um, so I have put some of the figures in their Killa cases back here. Um, and I showed them the way I did earlier because it was just easier to uh, show them that way. So there's the uh, AVAC pilot, which came with a terror drone, which I featured in the past. You'll see various troop builders there, including the uh, Worms uh, figure that came with the maggot. It has its antenna. Uh, you'll see a Black Major uh, Ninja Viper kind of wedged in there. You'll see some Crimson Guard Immortals and some uh, Vipers, various Vipers, Astro Vipers in the back. You can see Scrap Iron wedged in over there. Again, just more troops. You know, there you got version 2 Storm Shadow. Um, oh, you got the comic character known as Hannibal there, tucked in behind version 2 Storm Shadow. Um, so you got Mindbender and then next to him is uh, Serpentor and the second version of Cobra Commander. And in behind you've got various combinations of fan-made figures as well as official figures like those are um, those major blood colored Cobra Troopers were from the uh, G.I. Joe convention set those were literally called major blood skull troopers and uh, yeah there you see the version one of Storm Shadow and Croc Master even though his uh, actual pet companions over here in the back you'll see some black major produced snake armors like you'll see right here this is for the color made for Serpentor's coil and these are Red Shadow colored ones. Even though I did eventually get an official Red Shadow's escape armor, these were good placeholders in the meantime. There you see some bats back there and some other custom bats in various colors. Like here's one in the Mandalorian colors that my good friend, uh, a different Peter than the one I mentioned earlier, um, made that one for me. And you've got the uh, lines here of Palatoy Red Shadows. Well, actually a mix of um, there's a couple convention exclusive um, figures here, but for the most part, it's Palatoy Red Shadow stuff. And, you know, the bats are done by Red Laser's army. And um, this is a Black Major um, Viper bat here right next to Baron Ironblood. And then you see the row of Destro and his Iron Grenadiers. And again, some more uh, Red Laser army stuff, such as the Red Lasers. They think they call this one the Mars Trooper which is basically his equivalent of the blue shirts, but in Iron Grenadiers colors and the various uh, the various bats that serve the Iron Grenadiers. And of course, he's got Metalhead, Voltar, and others around him. Again, as I mentioned in the past, figures are crammed together pretty tightly, but I'd rather have the figure than not. And maybe it's just the flaw of mine that they don't display super gloriously, but that's my collection and sticking to it. Going up a shelf, you can see the various in a way sub teams, but in many other ways, just the lines of Cobra troopers and infantry and basically the army builders. So you can start by looking at the Dreadnoughts here. You pretty much have every mainline release of the Dreadnoughts uh, between 1984 through to 1989. So basically Zartan, his siblings, you know, the main Dreadnoughts you saw in the cartoon and plus others like Road Pig um, and Naga Hyde who I think they appeared in the Deke series, but not so much in the uh, in the Sunbow animated cartoon. And if I can reach back here, you'll see some more of the Red Lasers army um, figures, such as this um, bat here in Dreadnought colors. And right next to them is some of the Python Patrol stuff. So you'll see the various Python Patrol characters, including not just the ones from 1989, but also the ones from uh, 2003, including Major Blood over here. And next to the Python Patrol, you'll see the various rows of mainline. Mainline, I need to accentuate my words a little bit better sometimes when I'm not scripted. Wake up, Ken. Okay, so 
mainline release army builder. So you've got the Alley Viper there from 1989, and then the various types of army troops that you see in the Sunbow cartoon, such as the Snow Serpent, the Eels, Crimson Guards, Bats, Vipers. And uh, this is a Cobra officer, but behind him is a row of Cobra, just regular Cobra, the enemy soldiers. Um, so I was able to basically stack them in rows of about seven per row. Um, and then, of course, some spilled over down here because I couldn't fit every single one. Like In many cases, I bought 10 of each army builder. Um, at least I did for the main, main ones that appeared in the Sunbow cartoon and some other ones I bought less. Um, but they didn't all fit in a row of 10, so that's why some of them spilled over onto the next shelf, and maybe that's why it's a bit of a mess down there, whereas this shelf here is very nicely organized. Um, so here is some more of Serpentor's Coil Troopers. Okay, so I looked at that was indeed Overlord, not Overkill, um, from a 2006 convention set, and those are the rest of uh, Serpentor's Coil Troopers in a row there. And I know I showed some of Destro's Iron Grenadiers in the... Uh, shelf below but here's a whole row of them here the the actual the army builder for the iron grenadiers and a whole bunch of night vipers all complete with their monocles on the end and then here's a uh a convention exclusive custom run of an evil sergeant slaughter who's meant to be sergeant slaughter from worlds without end and then just some other various um just some other various either convention exclusives or customs like you do have a rock viper and a saw viper wedged in there and these are cool here you've got the uh, deadpool colored snake eyes and you've got um sound wave and shock wave um done by done by red lasers army as bats and you've got the row of snake armors there what do i got there one two three four five and uh yeah so this is basically the army builders shelf a part of the collection that I'm quite proud of. And coming up here, you've got a predominantly good guy shelf, but some villains over here as well. I mentioned the Red Shadows Escape Armor there, and he's right behind the... Um, this is a modern version of Cobra Commander as Old Snake in the... Uh, who appeared in the 1986 Transformers cartoon when he turned the Autobots into humans. And you got another Snake Armor over there just because he didn't fit in the bottom shelf and then my my friend peter uh, who i mentioned earlier also made that uh, october guard colored snake armor um in the back there it's a bit hard to see but it is a dark brown color so yeah and here <laughs> i had no place to put that ram cycle so it's actually like riding on top of the his tank looks a bit goofy but that's how it's displayed and you've got the character of kickstart also made by red lasers army that i made a video of back in the day on top of the original his tank and here you've got some Evil Forces Cobra Troops. Um, this is a character from the 2000s known as uh, Blackouts. Um, here's another uh, convention exclusive um, Bats there. Um, you got various versions of Cobra Commander and Destro in the back there. Here you got Quinn the Tracker, um, character in the comics who was a bad guy turned into a good guy. You got the Crimson Twins next to him. Here's um, the the uh, G.I. Joe Sky Striker Ramp Rat figure that came with the Sky Striker HasLab, um, another Black Major, Invaser, or Mortal, basically Snake Eyes, then in Arctic Colors. And uh, you got a, a bunch of October Guard characters here. You got Red Star, who was a part of the original Aura line, but also some characters from the 2000s. Like this is Colonel Breakov and Horror Show, um, and a bunch of the characters. You've got. Um, Big Bear over here, and uh, this is Gorky, although done in Big Bear's uh, mold. And this is the test shot of uh, the 1998 Gorky character over here. So that's one of the rare sort of pre-production um, GI Joes that I do have. And then you start getting into some of the mainline um, late 1980s, early 1990s Joes over here. You got Super Trooper, um, the Warthog Sarge over there. Um, you got getting the Slaughter's Marauders here and some custom set of Mercer, Red Dog, and Taurus all done as Marauders. You got the Marauder Sarge over there and Sarge riding his Triple T back there. See if I can tweak the brightness a little bit so that you can see him riding in the Triple T with his um, Renegades. And here's a 1964 action soldier decked out with the combat attack gear and other various pieces of equipment. I just thought it was, he happened to fit there and I just thought it would be cool to have the original 1964 G.I. Joe 
look overlooking the uh, smaller real American hero line of figures. Just going up a shelf here, you see some of the earlier run of Joes. I've featured these guys many times in history videos before, so I'm not going to go over each individual character, though maybe I should point out the flight suit Scarlet next to the uh, version 1 and version 1.5 of Scarlet. Um, so she came in the Haslab Sky Striker. Um, and of course you got Keel Hall here who came with the flag, another Sarge. Yeah, he's taller than everyone and he's probably blocking the way for Beachhead and others, but he's Sarge, so he's there. General Hawk, um, you got the Night Force Ripcord that came with the uh, Sky Striker. And uh, you can see I put Starduster and some of the other hard to find figures back up here after I showed them earlier. And you got a row of Steel Brigades along with some other custom uh, Red Laser Steel Brigades there in the Z Force, Night Force colors and uh, various others. So I'm actually gonna peel back the, the front row of figures here so that we can get a better look at what's behind them. So of course it's a bit tricky holding the camera with one hand and uh, fiddling with the figures with the other, but I've peeled back the first layer of figures so that you can see the various characters there all between, um, well, there's a few HasLab figures in here like Failsafe, um, but these for the most part are the early 80s through to about 1987 um, line of figures. Um, again, I'm not gonna go through every individual character, but this is a custom version of Sparks um, that I bought online way back in the day. And of course you got the fridge ever so iconic and uh, yeah you got some of the special missions brazil characters back there and yeah just you can see some of the characters like falcon and um chuckles and law and all that from back in the day uh well back in the day being 1987 and yeah beachhead cross country you know the version 2 snake eyes again this is just a very candid tour i didn't really map out exactly what i was going to do but i thought it'd be cool just to show these so it, it'll still be a little bit hard seeing some of the figures in the back, but I'm doing what I can for the most part. And again, I'll just keep repeating, you know, you can see most of these characters in various history videos that I've done elsewhere on the channel. Going up a little, you get into the G.I. Joe classified shelf as well as some of the Star Wars Black Series stuff. Now, this starts to feel a little bit more like a storage and a little bit less like a display. But here you got the various G.I. Joe classified figures. Um, here you got Duke in the Gridiron Command loadout. You've got the female version of the Steel Brigade there. General Hawk, one of my favorites. Okay, I should acknowledge the Dreadnoughts twins in Storm Shadow. Um, oh, Basta Lashan, one of my favorite characters because I happen to play the Knights of the Old Republic video games. You got Mara Jade behind her. Leia, of course. And getting over here, you start getting into old school cops. Now, just because of the um, continuity between cops and G.I. Joe, I thought that, you know, yes, Cops is a vintage line and G.I. Joe classified as a modern line, but it still looks pretty cool that um, not only were they by Hasbro, but of course, you know, Checkpoint is supposed to be related to the G.I. Joe character Beachhead. So it was kind of cool just to see these O-ring, these upscaled O-ring figures right next to larger G.I. Joe um, figures that happen to scale somewhat well. I wouldn't say perfectly, but they scale reasonably well. And again, I'm going to peel back the first row of figures so that we can take a closer look at what's behind them. Wow, until I peeled back that first layer of figures, I didn't realize just how cramped this actual shelf was. So I may even peel back the second layer of figures so we can see who's actually in the back. But you can see here the start of my X-Men collection here for Marvel Legends. A few more cops figures that you couldn't see behind the first row of figures. And of course you got Kamakura, who's one of my like sleeper favorites for G.I. Joe. Here you've got a G.I. Joe classified version of Jinx, who was gifted to me by uh, Payne's Toy Samples. Very, very good friend of the channel. As well as the uh, SDCC Chuckles, and of course, and of course you've got Destro and Baroness next to each other, and some more classic Star Wars characters in addition to um, the Rosario Dawson version of Ahsoka. Wow, now I feel a little bit silly here with just how much is packed back here. I kind of lost track because I just start shoving figures to the back and not realizing it. So there you see Button, Button, Muck, Boom, Boom. And now you can see Storm and a better look at Cyclops. And you can kind of see Gambit behind him a little bit there. Um, and of course, you've got the hard top from Cops here. A few other G.I. Joe classified items here. Let's get Kamakura out of the way. So you can see uh, the Range Viper as well as um, Tripwire. There's a custom um, Gridiron Studios um, Desert Trooper done by my good friend Dreadnought Ryan of the Island of Mr. Toy Collectors. Oops, I managed to zoom in a little bit there for no reason. Um, and you can see a hit and run custom in the back there with the Gridiron Studios loadout. 
course, you've got Ezra from the um, Rebel series. And uh, yeah, you see some other Great Iron Studios loadouts here for um, the mortar load loadout that they're using um, for short fuse. You see Grand Admiral Thrawn there, and you can see uh, Colossus's face just hiding behind there next to Boba Fett. And just some uh, more Star Wars Black Series stuff here. You, know, you got Luke, Fennec, Shand, and you know, more other stuff. Um, you got the Abeskar Armored Mandalorian there and Darth Nihilus. And if you look really closely at this one, I might actually zoom in on purpose. You can actually see the Master Chief back there. Ooh, I lost a little bit of resolution, but that's okay. And you can see some more Star Wars Black Series stuff there. I mean, yeah, I could probably keep peeling rows back, but I'm starting to feel a little bit silly about just how much stuff is crammed into this a low height shelf. So anyway. Now, just going up a shelf here, we're going to have a look at some G.I. Joe classified stuff. It's going to be a lot of the same characters. Um, I did buy two versions of Grunt so that I could put the Steel Brigade helmet on him. And my friend Mark um, printed out a, a jump jet pack for him to make him look more like an army builder. Um, it's funny, my friend's name is Mark, but he also printed out a Mark II design version of the backpack. So, good shout out to him. Um, so there you can see some of the G.I. Joe classified figures. Again, I won't go through every single character. I know I'll keep saying that throughout the video, but anyway, uh, so here's the two pack of the Valkyries, you got Scrap Iron, and you got the various classic Cobras, including some other army builders here. And this is um, a Televiper done in the Gridiron Studios uh, Telecom's loadout set, um, just because I happen to have one with the Trouble Bubble that's upstairs, and this is sort of like my spare that I didn't need to buy the Trouble Bubble for. And just like what I did earlier, I'm just gonna peel back the first layer of figures so that you can see a little bit better about what's behind. And just looking through from right to left, you can see more of the Cobras and our good guy faction for the Joes. And if you look in the far back there, you can see uh, Stalker with the Gridiron Studios uh, jump set. And yeah, just angling the camera in such a way that you can see some, of the, some more of the characters. I mean, this is a taller shelf, so it's easier to get the camera inside there. Again, many of these characters don't need any introduction. So, yeah, you got some army builders over there in the corner. This is the various like, Cobra infantry and Cobra um, officers or Cobra troopers. And here you've got the Studio Series 86 Dinobots all along the way. No swoop yet, but you got the other four. So, yeah, that's uh, by and large the G.I. Joe themed bookcase in the uh, Toy Connections, Toy Collection space. Oh, and in case you were wondering, yes, I did have to stand on a footstool in order to see the highest shelf. Okay, so at this point, I'm definitely standing on a chair to be able to see uh, what's above the bookcases. And I thought I would just change this up because, you know, you've just seen some very packed uh, and almost uh, <laughs> impractically packed bookshelves. And uh, before we get into the same debacle over here, I thought I'd show what's above the uh, bookshelves. And right over here is very much the pride and joy of my Transformers collection, which is ironic given that it's not even officially considered a Transformer. And that's the Diaclone... Battle Convoy, which was the predecessor from Takara's Diaclone Car Robots line that formed the basis for Optimus Prime a couple of years before the official start of Transformers Generation 1. So definitely a holy grail. Um, might be the most prized piece in my collection, though I don't know if it's the most expensive. Um, and behind him you've got the 1989 Transformers Victory Road Caesar, again only ever released in Japan. One of the harder combiners to get, but once I got to the end of my Generation 1 Transformers line, I began collecting some of the overseas stuff. Um, here you've got the Dark Wings set, which is the, uh, the Japanese uh, version of Darkwing and Dreadwind um, from the 1988 Master Force line. Uh, very similar to the, their uh, North American counterparts, but they're um, in a different color. So down here you've got some more Takara stuff. These are the um, Italian releases of um, basically, well, what's meant to be slag as well as sludge. Um, and these were made by the Italian company Gig using the Takara um, Japanese molds from the pre-Transformer Diaclone uh, dinosaur robo line. And uh, there's the uh, hardtop figure, or not hardtop, payload figure that I mentioned 
earlier in a slightly different um, in a slightly different acrylic case from uh, the other harder to find GI Joes. And just getting back to the Transformers um, Diaclone line, there's the gig or um, Italian release of the uh, of the ambulance, which would eventually become Ratchet. And right next to him is the uh, Micro Change Gun Robo from the Takara New Microman line. Uh, it's called, it, was, it was called New Microman. It's not actually new. Um, new Microman debuted in the early part of the 1980s, and this uh, figure came out. This Gun Robo MC12 version that was the predecessor for, well, Megatron, uh, was released in 1983. So he's the other prized Transformer in my collection. So between that figure and this Diaclone Battle Convoy, those form very much the forerunners to the Transformers as far as the leaders, the leaders are concerned. And right over here is another um, item from Transformers Master Force. This is called Land Cross, another combiner from 1989. And um, right next to him is another figure from uh, this time Transformers Master Force in 1988. And this would be Six Knight, which would be the um, recolor of the character known as Quick Switch. And above him, you get into the uh, Transformers, uh, getting closer, getting to the early 90s now, um, the Japanese release of Sonic Bomber, um, who was part of Diatlas's team in Transformers Zone. And then as part of the manga only return of Convoy, releases um this is 1991 sky gary um also in the box from takara so yeah there's by and large the foreign transformers display and um, before i forget here's a generation 2 version of jazz this one is not a foreign release but it tucked in well on the end here for the purpose of display and uh, there's a lot of empty space here at the front um because this part of the tour is, is staged a little bit more cleanly. Um, cleanly? Cleanly? I don't know what the word is. Because some of the boxes here actually go up on top of that shelf. So that's why um, it looks the way it does. But otherwise it's normally pretty cramped as well. You'll see that as a bit of a theme over here. And hopefully it's not too much of an eyesore to see some of the more... Uh, crammed and uh, jam-packed versions of the display but we'll move along here momentarily looking at the bookshelf next to the gi joes here you've got some power rangers lightning collection stuff and you've got a bootleg motu style hulk hogan from the vintage era plus a little bit more power rangers lightning collection and here we get into some modern motu as well and that includes the uh, sun man from the origins line and wundar in addition to the Motu WWE crossover Sarge. And we get into a bit of a mix of NECA plus Super 7 for some of the TMNT stuff. So in some cases you've got the TMNT Ultimates stuff and in some cases you've got the NECA cartoon accurate figures. Peeling back the first layer of figures, you can see the rest of the NECA tune accurate uh, turtle items and actually I should have also mentioned that some of these uh, turtles are from the TMNT classics run. I do have some others from the ultimates down here a few shelves down but I left the classics ones up there so this is a kind of a hodgepodge of ultimates classics and um, what do you call it NECA tune accurate as far as the collection is concerned and then um, behind the Power Rangers stuff was actually um, a good chunk of my Ghostbusters collection and the reason why I, I have them here is so that they can lean up against Ecto-1 and be displayed with Ecto-1. Oops, Janine fell over. I was just, just trying to take, take some figures down so that you could see Slimer back there and Vernon knocked him, hence why he's shaking. But um, these figures are actually shorter so I should probably put them into the front but then the uh, squiggly uh, proton pack um, effect gets in the way of some of the other figures which is why they're back there but in any case there's Ecto-1 and yes I do have the chair for Ecto-1 but I put it into the trunk um, because it doesn't fit there's just not enough clearance on the shelf above. Going a shelf down we've got some classic looking WWF wrestling superstar stuff from Mattel and here you got Sergeant Slaughter on the end in terms of both his classic look as well as his uh, heel Iraqi sympathizer look there you got Piper and Steamboat Heenan various versions of Hogan Warrior Macho with Elizabeth DiBiase and Virgil Flair my favorite wrestler of all time Bret Hart and the Legion of Doom with Paul Ellering and what I'll do is I'll just peel back the first layer here to show you some of the wrestlers in the back 
And here you should be able to see pretty much everyone now. There's my King of the Ring, Bret Hart, and uh, Kerry Von Erich, made famous, well, always famous, but even more so by the Iron Claw movie. Honky Tonk with some cool uh, soft goods here. Actually, a lot of the wrestlers have soft goods. You got various versions of Mr. T here. You got Duggan behind, Hacksaw Jim Duggan behind that uh, American made version of Hogan. The original Goat of Wrestling, um, Bruno San Martino. And it's actually Shawn Michaels, even though the dark hair would make you think it's Marty Jannetty, but it's actually Shawn. You see Vince McMahon back there, and look back, way back there in the zoom, you can see Andre the Giant and Bam Bam Bigelow, and uh, otherwise you've got some other classics like Rick Rude and uh, Davy Boy Smith, the British Bulldog. Multiple versions of the British Bulldogs, including Dynamite Kid, and you see George the Animal Steel back there. So yeah, a lot of the greats of uh, wrestling's past. Actually, I'm going to take down, or I already did take down one more row of figures, because this way you can see pretty much everybody. There's uh, The Rock's dad, Rocky Johnson, made largely famous by uh, the Young Rock series. There you can see Jake the Snake Roberts right behind um, the big boss man and uh, Kamala with his mask there and Dusty Rhodes and the uh, original version of, uh, or the original look of The Undertaker. It's a good time to fix his hat up a little bit more nicely. You got the Bushwhackers looking all goofy and Brutus and Billy Graham. Jimmy Hart, three members of Demolition, Earthquake and Typhoon, Volkoff, uh, Hillbilly Jim's lost his hat and he's fallen down somewhere. And uh, King Kong Bundy, who's hiding back there? I guess that's uh, Don Morocco back there and you got the Iron Sheik. So yeah, a um, lot of stuff on this shelf. So that was more the golden era of wrestling in the 80s. As we go down here, you look more towards the Attitude Era characters and a little bit with the New Generation Era worth of characters from the uh, early 1990s as well. And you can kind of see the shift here where you've got, I mean, some of the female wrestlers are mixed in there from the Attitude Era, but for the most part, you've got Vader and the 1-2-3 Kid, a 90s version of Macho Man, as well as Brett. Um, Hogan, because you know, you do need a 90s version of Hogan in some capacity, and Sean before he became world champ. And then as you move over here, um, you've got the Defining Moments version of Brett, but then you start getting towards the Attitude Era characters of Rock, Stone Cold, a DX version of Shawn Michaels, Chris Jericho, Foley, Rikishi, the APA, Paul Bearer, and again, I'll just take down the first row so you can see the back. So here you can see some of these 90s characters. You see the Hart Foundation here, including that really cool custom of Owen Hart that I got um, on eBay. Of course, Jerry Lawler and Tatanka. If you look, you can see uh, the Nasty Boys back there along with Warlord and uh, Diesel and Sid and a few others. Um, yeah, um, what else we got? Um, moving here, there's Foley, as well as middle-aged and crazy Terry Funk, as well as Edge and Christian Briscoe, uh, Degeneration X, and the Hardy Boys. And as we as we peel back another row, there you see Ken Shamrock. We talked about the tag teams of the Nasty Boys earlier. There, look, you can find Scott Hall there next to uh, Kevin Nash, and you got some of the McMahons. You got the uh, corporation version of uh, Big Boss Man, Luger there. You got some members of the nation, Taker and his more vampire-like appearance, along with Kane and the Big Show. And uh, yeah, there's Kurt Angle right over there. And I think he's got his Olympic gold medals with him. And uh, the Dudley Boys right in front of him. Moving down a little bit here, we see what's predominantly a Mythic Legion's shelf. Um, you'll also see some Figura Obscura stuff, such as the version 2 of the Headless Horseman over there. So, for the most part, what you'll see is just various figures across the various factions for Mythic Legions. And as you go from left to right, there are a few Animal Warriors of the Kingdom figures here that you can see as I've become a fan of that line as well. And I've got some Delta 17 Army Builders here. I've got the rest of my set of Wave 1 upstairs, and I do have my 
final uh, pre-production samples back there. You can't see them super well. Maybe I can find a way to prop them up a little bit so we can see them a little bit better. But those are the final pre-production samples. Um, pretty much holy grails to my collection since there's only a few of those in the world. But yeah, this is by and large an independent toy line shelf. One shelf down, you see what's predominantly a wrestling shelf, and it's just dawning on me how many Hulk Hogan's I have in my collection. As you can see, another red and yellow there, and in the back you'll see a NWO version next to a NWO Giant, Scott Hall, Eric Bischoff, Kevin Nash. I think DDP's back there as well. Um, but yeah, so this is more of the Mattel wrestlers. For this one, you can see just enough that I may not need to peel down the front row so that you can see them better. I mean, I might do it anyway, just so we can get a better look. And as you go from left to right, there's more of the AEW wrestlers there. You can see Darby Allen and Orange Cassidy over on the far side. Paul Heyman just happened to fit there. That's why he's there. And some of these versions like of Daniel Bryan and Christian are from the WWE appearances, but they still scale well. Like the Mattel WWE wrestlers still scale well with the AEW Jazzwares figures, which is why I've got them there. And here you can see some TMNT Ultimates the rest of my ultimates you see the four turtles there as well as april and casey jones and you've got the old school 90s hasbro wrestlers as well okay so i did take down the front row to see the wrestlers in the back a little bit better this way you can see characters like you just see cody there and luchasaurus cm punk mjf and sammy guevara you can see some other wwe ultimate editions there like cena and austin and the fiend yeah, Brock, Adam Cole displayed with the AEW figures, even though he's wearing an NXT belt. And yeah, you can see just some more of the WCW era wrestlers from the late 90s over there. You got Sting back there with Michael Hayes, and you got Harlem Heat in the back, another version of Ric Flair, Drew McIntyre, so on and so forth. So yeah, this by and large covers the uh, modern wrestling collection, including the shelves up there. We get down a little bit here and you can see some of my Palatoy Action Force stuff. This is actually a custom of um, the Special Weapons Force Boffin figure, but for the most part you'll see some of the sub-team characters there and a couple of characters from the initial wave of 12 back in 1982. And if you look back there you'll see a Simpsons edition of uh, Breath the Hitman Heart as well. But yeah, you've got various characters representing the multiple sub-teams for Action Force there. Um, I got into Motu collecting for vintage stuff later in 2023 which is why some of my Motu stuff's all over the place but for now you've got Skeletor and um, Zodak hanging out here kind of just on their own and then there you see the um, Grand Moff Tarkin that was uh, released in the vintage or I should say retro style and you've got various characters here from the Knights of the Old Republic video game namely uh, You've got Darth Revan, Darth Malak, and Darth Nihilus. And then here you start getting into the vintage era of Star Wars figures here made by Kenner. There's, uh, there's, this is really a rabbit hole that could deepen quite a bit if I decide to expand the lineup a lot more. But for now, this is what I've got. I'd say for a Star Wars collection, it's relatively modest, even though you can count a fair number of figures. And of course, the ever so friendly Ewoks at the front, who are many people's favorites. We come down a shelf here to uh, various LJN WWF Superstars wrestlers, though there's a G.I. Joe Steel Brigade patch just hanging out there for whatever reason. And again, this is more stuff that I featured in various history videos. Oh, you can see that Coco Beware's Bird Frankie has fallen off to the side here. So once again, you see a lot of the same characters that you saw on the uh, modern style wrestling toy shelves. So I'm not gonna reintroduce every character here, but I'll try to have a look at some of the characters in the back row as well. And here's a look at the wrestlers that we couldn't see with the front row blocking. And you can still kind of see the junkyard dogs a little bit blocked back there. I do have his collar, but not his chain. But you can see characters like Big John and Jesse Ventura back there, Paul Orndorff, various others, Greg Valentine, the original Andre the Giant back there, including the Series 2 version over there. Jimmy Snuka, and various other characters to close out this particular wrestling shelf. We're now coming down to the bottom shelf and you can see the rest of the wrestlers here. There's some of the harder to find LJN Series 6 figures as well as uh, 
I know I've got both of the killer bees, but I only see one over there. <laughs> Make for a bit of a Where's Waldo moment here. You can see some of the other wrestlers there, like Warrior and Rude and King Harley Ray. Some of the harder to find ones as well. And the two later versions of Hogan and, of course, the ever so elusive Sergeant Slaughter uh, mail away by Hasbro. And we start getting a little bit into a mix of modern here. There you can see some of the Jada Toy Street Fighter stuff as well as Marty McFly from NECA and some other TMNT Ultimates, which would include Bebop and Rocksteady over here. A bunch of visionary characters. And I did take some characters down from the front row just so we could see them a bit better, such as this Marvel Legends uh, Juggernaut here and some other... Uh, you got Jackalman there next to the Ultimate Shredder. And of course, the vintage Mr. T from A Team Galoob, as well as the Michael Knight Knight Rider figure. So that covers this particular bookcase over here, and we'll have uh, we'll continue the tour in a moment. Backing up a little, we're gonna have a look at this feature killer wall of well boxed stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> Not really sure where to begin, but like I said earlier, this stuff isn't normally here. It's normally uh, in other parts of the house or above the bookcases. So I guess we can first have a look at this Marshall Gravestar figure at the bottom here. It's sealed in uh, an acrylic case, which I got over at the Vancouver Comic and Toy Show back um, in 2023 there. Here you've got both Fortress Maximus and Grand Maximus both in the box and I have shown um, photos in the past of them outside of the packaging or outside of the box. Um, the Grand Max might be my most expensive Transformer. I think it might be more valuable than the Diaclone Battle Convoy but I haven't checked values recently. Not that it would matter. I want him because he was part of the Transformers Master Force Japanese series. And here's the uh, G.I. Joe 1983 headquarters in the box. Fully complete. I've shown some loose images of this as well as part of my History of G.I. Joe 1983 tour, or I should say history video. And um, here's the Rolling Thunder complete in the box as well. And we've got the Tomahawk as well. Um, that's also made its way into a history video in the past. And here you've got the Mamba just, uh, just above it from 87 there. I think I said I got this uh, Red Laser Exterminator. Um, back in 2022, but it was actually the uh, fall 2023 Victoria's Ultimate Hobby and Toy Fair. Not that it matters much when I got it. The fact is I got it. Um, the Dagobah playset I got that same day and the foam is still there, like the actual, like for those who have the playset, you'll know what I mean is that the uh, elusive foam um, is still intact for the most part there. And here's a, a boxed uh, Generation 1 Galvatron that I've got next to a uh, sealed on acrylic in acrylic case. Um, like sealed on card vintage um, with acrylic case protection, Mr. T. There's the uh, Death Saurus figure that I did a video on way back in uh, in advance of the uh, Haslab that came out for Transformers. Uh, there's the box for Metroplex. It's the box only. Um, same thing with Omega Supreme because the actual figures reside in the collection itself. And same could be said for this um, 1989 Generation One. Transformers Victory Great Shot figure. Um, that's just the box and foam. Um, and yeah, the actual figures in the collection itself. And same could be said for this uh, Transformers Victory Saber gift set of Star Saber and Victory Leo. Um, that's the box and foam. I believe I got the instructions inside too. Um, the actual toys are on the display shelf over here to my left. And here you've got MicroMaster, uh, the rocket base known as Countdown. That one actually has the toy on the inside because that's not out for display. Um, and uh, before I forget, Astro Train's up here as well. Um, I've got a loose version in my collection and one in the box. And just going over here, um, this is a Triple T with Sarge and Slaughter. I have both a loose Triple T with Sarge in the collection as well as a boxed one. And we got the Thunder Machine here. Uh, that's There is a Thunder Machine inside. Um, Thrasher is over on, on my Dreadnought shelf. And uh, above here is a... My good friend Gaz's favorite part of my collection, which is the VF-1S Armored Valkyrie GVP-1S with the box and foam that was, uh, I would say, donated to the channel by my good friend, a uh, high school friend, Garman, but uh, he, he offered me a trade that was heavily in my favor. 
that was uh, how he how we, he gifted it to the channel in some ways. And um, here's some of the smaller GI Joe playsets and battlefield accessories that have also um, shown up in various history videos. And that's not a sealed snow serpent. It's got the card, but uh, I put a a, a comic wrap uh, like a a comic slip um, case around it. Not really a case. You know what I mean. Um, just to hold it onto the card. Um, down here I've got some mask stuff, got the boxed firecracker and the boxed outlaw both over here. And here's another grail in the collection. This is uh, the pretender known as Metal Hawk. Um, he was a Japanese only release in 1988. Another relatively pricey piece of the collection. This is the second Metal Hawk I've owned. I sold the other one, missed it, and repurchased it later on. Here's uh, what's more or less a companion piece to the uh, um, VF1S Valkyrie I showed earlier. This is Jetfire, another uh, popular character in the collection and some more boxed uh, G.I. Joe items in here. And an on-card uh, April O'Neil sealed on the card as well. Um, going over here is the uh, Fun School uh, Rescue Squad set that I picked up at Joe Fest that I mentioned at the end of my Joe Fest 2023 video that I actually showed to Sergeant Slaughter in hand, the one that he said he hadn't had the chance to ever hold one of these sets in person before. Uh, the Sarge that I got on the card is upstairs with the, uh, with, um, is, is upstairs above my desk. And here is a, uh, the cage match accessory. The cage is actually in there. Um, and uh, for my, that's for my LJN wrestling collection. So yeah, there's the uh, ever so, uh, I'm going to stand up on a chair here so I can get a better downward angle. There's my uh, boxed wall of, can't get far back enough here, my boxed wall of awesomeness stuff. And you can see that the collection wraps around like this. There you see my ring light there trying to add a little bit more to make this tour a little bit brighter. And over here next to the mobile command center, I've uh, staged the uh, box Defensor in the Canadian box there. These gift sets, some of them like Defensor can be really hard to find. So I was glad to get the Canadian box um, version. The US box one is even harder to find. And here's the custom uh, Mountie Sergeant Slaughter that we did as a Facebook group, custom run exclusive for a Facebook group that I run. And uh, here's the Once a Man Cobra Commander done by the very, very talented Matthew LaCroix, um, sold back to me in 2019. And here's the, uh, um, it was a Joe Fest 2022 um, superhero figure done up to look like the fun school appearance. But yeah, some more stuff over here. As we turn over here towards the other wall, we're gonna have a look at a lot of Transformer stuff. But first, we're going to head over to the bottom shelf here and look at this mixture of Transformers and He-Man stuff. So on this bottom shelf, again, I've just taken some figures down to put them on the floor here to make them easier to see. This is the uh, Big Jim Eagle that uh, Zoar and Screech uh, were eventually molded off of when they reused the Big Jim tooling for Motu. And case in point there, there's Screech. And just going back and forth here, you'll see some of the vintage Masters of the Universe stuff. Like I know I had Skeletor and Zodak on another shelf and I even had He-Man upstairs. Um, so it's a little bit scattered, but you know, at least they're all here to be seen. Um, there's the classics version, Adora, as well as Prince Adam. And here's the cab for generation two, Optimus. Uh, the uh, trailer is in storage somewhere because there just wasn't a lot of room to uh, lay, the uh, lay the trailer down flat. Here's the uh, Transformers Legacy version of Menasaur. Um, probably the nicest Hasbro official combiner that I've seen in the modern line. And here you've got the uh, Unite Warriors or the Japanese Combiner Wars version of Defensor and Superior. The sculpts are, you know, especially on Defensor, look a little bit dated now by today's standards. But, you know, the head sculpt at least looks good. Um, there's the War for Cybertron Siege Jetfire and the um, Make Toys third party version of Devastator. And back there, you've got a um, Planet X Genesis version of Omega Supreme, which is also a third party Transformer. And here you've got the uh, Fans Toys uh, Phoenix that uh, was made to look like Jetfire slash Skyfire. And here's the Mastermind Creations version of Predaking and a Fans Project version of Bruticus over there. So that entails the bottom shelf. 
of this display case. And here is what was intended initially to be a modest Masters of the Universe Classics shelf, which has since become extremely, extremely packed. Um, the good thing about Masters of the Universe Classics is you got characters that you wouldn't normally, or that you didn't see in the original line, such as uh, Hero over here, who was in initially uh, intended in the Powers of Grayskull line that was never released. And you've got, of course, Randor and Marlena and... Uh, yeah, you've got extra detail here, like the helmet on uh, on Panthor. And yeah, this is one of those shelves that I'm going to need to take down the front row of figures so that you can see what's behind them. And looking over here, you'll see more of Skeletor's evil forces and I'm trying to get in behind there, but I'll just have to move him. Um, there you can see Hordak behind Merman there, and you can see some of Hordak's uh, troopers back there and uh, Super 7 version of Shadow Weaver. Oops, she's kind of blocking the sorceress, I just realized. Um, yeah, she is. Huh, may have to fiddle with that a little bit. But yeah, there you see uh, Keldor there in behind Fisto. And uh, there's um, Vikron, who me and uh, Toy Habits did a collaboration history video on. And King Grayskull and Bo Ular and uh, Vikor, Wundar, yeah, Glimmer, um, the Masterverse version of King Grayskull back there behind Wundar. And of course, He-Man riding Battle Cat and Orko. So yeah, there's the uh, classics shelf as it is. As we go up a shelf, we're going to get a little deeper into the Transformers collecting, though we do have the uh, Masters of the Universe, Masterverse version of Sunman over there and some Thundercats, both some vintage Thundercats as well as some Ultimates and a you'll see a ramen toy, a head sculpt on that uh, Masterverse Dolph Lundgren version of He-Man. So there you go. There's a Beast Wars uh, Megatron in the Masterpiece style there. So that one's officially by Takara. There's a uh, MMC third-party version of Thunder Clash. And there is a Fans Toys Galvatron that they've advertised this, the name Sovereign. There's another MMC figure there in Thick Shot, which they've called Hexatron. I'm trying to get my camera focus here. And you've got various third-party uh, figures here, like this version of Octane, as well as X Transbots and their versions of Scourge and Cyclonus, and uh, official uh, War for Cybertron version of um, Double Dealer there, and the uh, the Alpha Trion that came as part of the Hasbro Two Pack. And uh, this is a knockoff, but it's an oversized knockoff of a uh, Studio Series Gnaw, so he's scaled more or less like the Masterpiece figures. Um, he's supposed to be a bit shorter anyway as per the cartoon so he does scale reasonably well for a masterpiece and there's the uh, rat bat cassette there so that covers that shelf and we'll move on up oh wait hold on earthrise sky links didn't mean to ignore this one right over there with the articulated neck that one looks good all right and we'll move along here's what's primarily a third season of the transformers cartoon with some dinobots shelf over here if you're looking at the very back there, you've got Fans Toys versions of the Dinobots, along with the MP22 Ultra Magnus. Here's the MP08 Grimlock, which is shorter, but it does come with foot platforms from the Fans Toys version of Slag that um, allowed him to stand a bit taller. And there you got Snarl and Swoop. And you got various third-party versions here from, be it Fans Toys, MMC, X Transbots, etc., for some of the other Season 3 characters. And uh, you got Scott and T Bob from Mask hiding out down here. That was just a good spot where they happened to fit. Um, this exosuit version of Spike is from the uh, Masterpiece Bumblebee. And next to him is actually, that's a uh, Hen K version of Bumblebee that has a render form upgrade kit for the head and guns that look like Gold Bug. There's the X Transbots version of Wheelie as well um, and you got the various cassettes there for blaster i believe it was the keith's fantasy club company that made those and you got the autobots from beast wars as well and you get some more of the third party cassettes and of course dinobot over here and you got blur and hot rod hiding over there and rodimus these ones are official um transformers ones by either takara well the Hot Rods by Takara, the Rodimus is by Hasbro, and this is the Unique Toys version of Blur. Hopefully I got all that right. It's been a while since I've really uh, looked at the third-party Transformers company, so it can be a bit hard to remember some of the stuff that I would have remembered a few years ago. So here's the iconic Season 1 slash 2 Decepticon shelf. 
Um, this will be a mix of official and third party as well, starting with the MP36 Megatron. And these are the MP11 um, molded uh, jets. I know that they've re-released the jets multiple times in both official and third party, but these are the ones that I have. This is the MP11 Starscream that's got the coronation gear. Uh, back there, you've got the Fans Toys version of Shockwave that they named as Quake Wave. And then you've got the uh, Conehead Seekers that were done by iGear. I think iGear has since shut down as a company. Um, but they got the three Conehead Seekers done before they did that. You know, there's the uh, X-Transbots version of, uh, of Astro Train. Oh, no, sorry. X no, DX9. DX9 Astro Train. And, uh, as well as Blitzwing, who I did a video on a while ago. Um, that I canceled one pre-order after all those years. And then got uh, this version. And then there's the uh, Soundwave, Masterpiece Soundwave. This is a, the Takara version with the red eyes. And I do have one carded Visionaries figure here. Um, this would be uh, Sindar of the Darkling Lords. Another item that I got from the really fun Victoria's Ultimate Hobby and Toy Fair. And here's the Make Toys version of Reflector. Um, and you got some of the official uh, cassettes as well that go with sound wave laser beak over there on the end and these are the bad cube versions of the insecticons so once again i think i got all the third party companies names right so there's your mix of official and third party decepticons from the first two years of the transformers moving up a shelf here you get the uh iconic arc crew and season two crew of the transformers most of these characters really don't need any introduction so, I mean, everyone knows Optimus, everybody knows Bumblebee. Um, mostly, you know, the characters that are on here. I mean, I could go through them one by one again, but I'm not going to go into that much detail. These are various third-party mini-bots done by either Bad Cube, X-Trans Bots, Ace Toys, Fans Toys, Unique Toys, so on and so forth. The only official, um, Bumble uh, the only official mini-bot is actually Bumblebee, and then up... Here you've got various third party and various official Takara and Hasbro masterpieces. And of course the very cool MP10 Optimus. But really, you know, picture's worth a thousand words. So we just go ahead and uh, look at the scenery here. I'm trying to keep my camera in focus. Hopefully it comes out well in the final video there. But there's your very iconic Transformers Autobot shelf and uh, Decepticons, third season in Beast Wars so on and so forth in this particular bookcase and getting above the bookcases here people say on this channel they're huge fans of masks so there you go mask vehicles across the first three years of the line um you can hear the chair squeaking that i'm standing on just because i do need a bit of assistance to get this high there's the box for gator over there there you got uh, vanessa warfield and uh, the Rhino, Thunderhawk. There's a boxed Raven over there. You know, there's uh, Cliff Dagger inside the Jackhammer. And uh, yeah, the various other vehicles ending with the Bulldog and Slingshot on the end there. So breaking up the Transformers tour by looking at some more mask stuff. And that's already in addition to some of the uh, boxed mask stuff that I've shown over here with Outlaw and Firecracker. Directly below the mask shelf, you see what's predominantly a Transformers combiner shelf, and I just want to see if I can get Skylynx's mouth open here so it looks like he's uh, attacking, or at least fighting, in fighting mode. So there you see uh, Superion and uh, Preda King, along with Skylynx, as mentioned, and a uh, Manasaur. This is uh, Raiden, uh, 1987 uh, exclusive from Japan. Um, it's the six bots are original, but some of the combiner pieces like the fists, the head that goes on the top, uh, you know, the extensions here on the leg are from a knockoff set. I never did manage to get a fully um, original Raiden, but again, the bots are original, the accessories are not. Um, here's Perceptor. Mind the head has trouble standing up. I know he's Michael from Toy Habits, his favorite uh, um, Transformer. 
Um, just something I remember here on the spot. And you got Generation 1 and Generation 2 versions of Devastator, and Bruticus is kind of wedged in there. I think this is a case where I'm going to have to uh, take, take down the front row and uh, show the back a little bit better. All right, that's a little bit clearer. And uh, this is uh, Piranicon, or King Poseidon, as he's known in Japan. He's nowhere near complete, but I got just enough combiner pieces and all of the bots um, to make him at least look presentable for display. I usually like to get my figures complete, but this is one of those I just never circled back to um, in order to get him complete. There's Abominus over there, Computron next to him, and Defensor. And uh, there's... Um, I don't do a lot of customs, but back in the day I did do this custom of a um, evil Jetfire of what you know Jetfire would have looked like if he was a Decepticon and released as a Decepticon in the uh, original line. Uh, there's the Generation 2 Megatron in the tank mode, and uh, better look at the G1 Bruticus over there. And uh, yeah, let's have a look at the next shelf, I guess. So let's move down here into the primary Decepticon shelf. As you can tell, this display is largely a Generation 1 Transformers display bookcase uh, with some moderns mixed in closer to the bottom. But this shelf here was intended to be a Generation 1 um, years 1 and 2 of Decepticons only, but there was enough room on the shelf to get some characters from the 3rd and 4th years. Like, yeah, you got Soundwave, but at the same time you've got the Duocons and Flywheels and Battle Trap who weren't, and who didn't get released until the 4th year or the 4th season of Transformers. And of course there you've got Reflector, the Mail Away, and the various cassettes and Insecticons. A lot of the same characters you saw on the Masterpiece shelf, but now in vintage form. Although in the back there you're, you're able to see um, the some of the Target Masters. Um, as well as a Generation 2 Ramjet there in the purple. There you got Megatron. There you've got some of the Headmasters for the Decepticons. Um, and there you got Gnaw as well, the Sharkticon, and uh, the Decepticon clones, as well as uh, Run Amok and Runabout, Triple Changers. And yeah, so that covers the uh, opening seasons of the Decepticons, at least. This would be my primary Autobots shelf. You can see um, right there, oh, there's a DevCon mixed in as uh, the lone modern figure on that shelf. But you can see primarily um, the first two seasons worth of Autobots on here. That's a custom blue blue streak, not a not an original. But you do see the red face slag there, um, the rarer version of him with Optimus. And uh, for Grimlock, there's two versions on the shelf. One's the Diaclone version and one's the uh, regular uh, Generation 1 version. There's the uh, blue version of Hoist known as Helix or Hilux and the blue uh, the yellow um, side swipe there um, serving as the Diaclone version so yeah I've got a mixture of some Diaclone stuff in here and this is a Diaclone version of Snarl over here on the end and a Diaclone version of Ironhide as well so this is a mix of Diaclone and Generation 1 stuff but you've got the mini bots in the front in fact you even got some Generation 2 stuff there like you've got um, cliff, uh, cliff jumper. You've got Beachcomber, and if you look closely, you see the the Bumblebee, the gold Bumblebee head, just sticking up there behind Sea Spray. Um, man, you got the uh, Jump Starters, etc. So the reason I was stuttering to myself there is I'm wondering if I want to take some figures out so we can see the back rows better. But I think you get a pretty good idea here, so no need to do any of that. And here's where you get into the third season of Autobots. Um, as well as some of the headmasters and some of the pretenders and I've managed to wedge Galvatron in there in six shots just because the uh, the shelf the shelf clearance is just high enough um, for them to fit there um, if I try to put them on other shelves the shelf clearance may not be enough but there's the Metroplex I mentioned earlier um, that was in the I had the box on display along the wall there and Omega Supreme as well his tracks had to come out because I wouldn't have been able to fit him in otherwise oh, there's issue number one of the war within by Simon Furman and Don Figueroa. Um, there's a third party version of RC that I thought looked good with uh, the G1 figures. But yeah, otherwise, you got primarily movie characters. Uh, Grapple fits here just because he happens to fit uh, height wise. Um, is the top of this top of this thing here was just, uh, this boom was just uh, too tall for him to fit on another shelf. There you got both Blaster in the back as well as a reissue of Twin Cast. So that, that Twin Cast is not an original. And uh, you've got, again, the various pretenders there that Metal Hawk led. But otherwise, it's uh, Autobots and more Autobots. There's, oops, not my camera. Uh, Roadbuster and Whirl as well. Mini bots and cassettes, clones, you name it. It's pretty much all there. 
here we get down to the modern um, shelf. This is a weird case where everyone's cramped together, but you can pretty much see everyone. Again, it's as I, as I talk through this, I'm basically collecting three different lines of Transformers. I've got G1, I've got Masterpiece, and third-party Masterpiece, and then here I've got the uh, War for Cybertron, Studio 86, and Legacy stuff that all kind of meshes really well together. So there's more of the same characters. Um, there's Dion and Ariel from the two-pack as well. There's, uh, I forget his name, I think it's Junk Heap in the back there. Uh, meant to be a junkie on army builder, Ryan Pax. I'm just pointing out the characters that we haven't talked about before and that haven't appeared on other shelves. Uh, that's a custom of Beachcomber. Um, what else have I got there? I know I've got Air, I've got the Elita One here. So, oh, there she is. She's behind Cup. There's Elita One, and there's a War War Within version, um, third party War Within version. I think it was called um, General Grant was the name of the character because it was third party and you couldn't use the uh, name officially um of optimus prime or war within optimus prime so yeah that's uh this shelf over here and here's a hodgepodge of decepticons in the modern line but also some uh pretenders over here and that's actually a leo kaiser a very rare leo kaiser back there um from the 89 victory series behind the pretenders and i was feeling a little cramped i think i'm gonna take down the first row again and so you can see the back a little bit better so there's that first row that I just took out and put onto the floor here so that you can see them a little bit better or more importantly so you can see the figures behind them a little bit better. So again more characters from the War for Cybertron, Studio 86 and various legacy series of characters. Um, again more of the same but iconic nonetheless. You can see the, the G1 uh, like, uh, Scourge back there. and. Cyclonus might be hiding on the shelf here somewhere. Um, and it's a bit sad when you have to play Where's Waldo with your uh, with your own figures. There's definitely too much stuff on here, I won't lie. It's it's really, really packed. And again, there's the uh, hard-to-find Leo Kaiser figure. And as we get to the last shelf of this uh, predominantly Generation 1 display, there's Great Shot um, that I showed earlier. Uh, he had I showed the box on the box wall earlier, but there he is, a uh, loose version of him. And there's Victory Leo and Star Saber who were in the gift set, who would have come in the gift set that I showed earlier for that box. There's a Scorponok in the back. There's a 1988 Overlord, uh, one of the figures many people consider to be a holy grail in uh, Transformers collections. And there's a 25th anniversary version of Unicron. Uh, that's pretty much the only Unicron in my collection. I don't have one of the larger third party ones, nor the HasLab, nor would I know where to put it. I mean, you see how packed tight everything is already. Um, let alone having something even larger in the collection. There's Trypticon and there's Power Master Optimus along with his Apex Armor or God Bomber as the um, God Jinrai and God Bomber as they're known in Master Force. There's Galaxy Shuttle, another grail to some uh, Transformers collectors and some various Micro Masters at the bottom. And the uh, Japanese uh, Ghost Shooter um, character there and a modern version of Nightbird and the third party of Quintesson Scientist over there. So yeah, that's the tour of this particular bookcase. And I can honestly say right now that this uh, tour is winding down and ramping down to an end. And as much stuff as I've already shown, I couldn't quite fit everything in. So I figured I'd pipe in some uh, archive footage of stuff that I couldn't leave on display. So for example, you've got this vintage Castle Grayskull, as well as the Talon Fighter that I feel that just makes such a really good set. Here's Fortress and Grand Maximus yet again that I showed earlier, and of course the awesome and amazing Boulder Hill mask playset that's such an icon. And you've got the G.I. Joe Cobra Terror Drome, the massive enemy headquarters, as well as the USS Flag that was previously displayed. I've still got it, but can't leave it on display. And of course, it's got the HasLab Sky Striker on it. And there's the uh, Sears exclusive Crimson Attack Tank and the G.I. Joe headquarters yet again. And here's some Hot Toys 1-6 stuff, such as Iron Man's Hall of Armor, a bunch of the Avengers, as well as some other Marvel characters, Tyrion from Game of Thrones, and the Dark Knight collection, as well as my Star Wars collection. And here's a look at my shelves when I used to be able to display my hot toys. And here's a look at some Bandai editions of modern Power Rangers figures. And what we'll do here 
is do one more sort of roundabout panoramic view of the entire collection as it was on display for the purpose of this video tour. There you see the boxed wall that I wish I could leave up forever, but unfortunately I can't. And we'll just have a look at the other set of bookshelves over here. So, hope you've enjoyed this and uh, still got a little bit more to show you, but by and large, this is the primary display area. This is my upstairs workspace. Uh, there's my uh, computer where I sometimes do my live streams from and you can see right next to my desk is uh, some of my Delta 17 figures here. You got the whole first run of 12 figures between the Delta 17 faction themselves, Retrograd and the Dark Shadows and some more of these uh, final uh, pre-production uh, samples um, that I had a few downstairs, but I got a couple more up here, and here's some of the Delta 17 uh, card backs and uh, file cards with the bios that uh, I wrote up there for Steve. And above here next to my printer, you see some other miscellaneous stuff, like you've got uh, the uh, He-Man, the vintage He-Man figure riding Battle Cat. I think I've got a Delta 17 patch that Steve sent me. There it is. And uh, there you got the Mythic Legion's Dubon figure with the... Uh, Male version of the Steel Core and uh, Trouble Bubble with Shockwave. You got an Animal Warriors of the Kingdom um, Pale figure right there next to Serpentor, whose head barely or barely clears the shelf there. You got a bunch of others there. You got the Celtus Holy Grail Mythic Legions figure next to Sarge, and uh, a couple of Marauders figures there of their uh, Jack Burton and uh, Snake Plissken renditions, and a few vintage Micronauts. So. Yeah, and I was looking for, and this shelf here looks a bit bare just because uh, normally I have some boxed stuff here, but they're currently downstairs as you see. I was looking for my G1 Cyclonus earlier and I forgot that I bought a box for it and displayed it here. And then you've got um, this accessory set that my buddy Crash sent next to the Skeledrones. Um, the Super Cop that I got from Joe Fest there along with uh, Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. And right over here is the uh, custom Kendar figure that uh, Adam uh, had sent me. Uh, Christmas of 2022 and uh, the uh, G.I. Joe 66 Green Beret here you've got the uh, BBTS exclusive um, Night Off Steel Brigade next to uh, Karak there and uh, a Muppet and a Puppet Snoopy so that by and large is uh, the collection but the part that's in my uh, room office work area and just for fun because you've seen these dudes in my videos before there's uh, the overweight Snoopy that I always have a bit of a fun time with, making fun of, joking with him, and Ralph here who doesn't want to sit up straight. But anyway, that's uh, the conclusion of the tour. Well, that was the look at the Toy Connections toy collection in almost its entirety. And if you enjoyed this video, I'm gonna go ahead and suggest a couple other videos right over here. You can have a look at a G.I. Joe history video right over on this link, and you can have a look at a Transformers toy history video by clicking on this link right over here. Otherwise, thanks again, and I'll see you all next time. Take care.